Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we are talking about Friday Black by Nana... Nene, is it Nene, Nana? I'm not sure. Uh, Kwame Ajay Brenya. Um, this is a fantastic story collection. If you don't want to hang out and watch this review, I don't blame you. Just go on and go buy the damn thing. This is one of those collections that change that change your whole perspective on something. Um, there's I'm, just, I'm talking about the writing. I'm not talking about the politics of the book or any of that stuff. We'll get to that in a second. But the, the writing here is so fresh and human and polished, but it also feels very raw in places. And I don't mean raw as in unpolished. I just said it was polished. But there's a feeling like there's so much passion. Um, and raw is the, the closest thing I can get to... Um, it, describing it to you. There's an urgency to it. Um, these are stories that you just feel like you have to read. Um, if you're of a certain mindset, we're going to get to that in just a minute. Um, but the the themes and the topics, it's very current affairs. Um, it's very topical as far as the as far as the political, uh, you know, temperament of this country is concerned. The, the thing is, it's not that political, though. The, the stories are deceptively deep in places. There are some fables, uh, especially The Lion and the Spider. Uh, that was a great story. There's more of a fable aspect to it. There, there's a literal fable told in that one. And I'm a big fan of anything. A story within a story, I'm a huge fan of that. And there's at least two stories in here like that. Now... With the going into the political aspect of it, there's not there, there's no there's no name there's no name dropping. It's not like he's Trump bashing, Obama bashing, or any politician bashing. There's no politician bashing. What he's doing is he's taking real world topics and flipping them on their head and making them and writing speculative speculative fiction about them. There's a story about a man who's haunted by. His aborted, his aborted children. Uh, there's another story about um, a school shooting where the. I'm, I'm trying not to give too many. I'm not, trying not to give spoilers, but I want to talk about what I enjoyed about these stories. Uh, there's one story where there's a there's a school shooting um, at a college, and the shooter ends up being stuck with his victim in the afterlife. That's that's all I'm going to tell you about that one. Um, the very first story, though, right out of the gate, you can go and read the look inside on Amazon and decide for yourself if it is too, quote-unquote, predictable, not predictable, political for you. Um, the reason I say that is the first story is probably the most current affairs topical kind of deal that you're going to you find in the story. So if you can get through that one... You're going to love, if, if you like that story, you're going to love the rest of the collection. Um, I can see how this might feel a bit preachy to my conservative friends or to the Trump supporters out there or anything like that. Trump is never mentioned. Um, not Republicans and conservatives aren't really mentioned either. It's more of the mindset and not, you know, just labeling everyone with a broad brush stroke, uh, which I was impressed with. Um, the, the, but the, I, I want to hit this home. The thing that makes this collection so good is the writing. Um, the imagination is stellar. It's outstanding. There are stories in here that just absolutely blew me away with how, but not, not really how uh, original they were, but the, the twists on the tropes, maybe, like the haunting trope, or the, the trope about, you know, viol uh, not really a trope, but violence in public, that kind of thing. How we deal with and how we perceive violence on the news, things like that. Um, the only stories that didn't really hit me um, were two toward the end. The uh, second to last and third from last stories that were, both of them are about working in retail. Um, one is How to Sell a Jacket as told by Ice King, and the other one is in retail. Um, the, the Ice King story, it was all right. I liked the ending of it. Um, I liked the message behind the story, but in retail, 
felt too short. Um, it just didn't seem to go anywhere. Maybe I completely missed the theme. That That's entirely possible. And then he finishes it up with uh, through the Flash, and I completely forgot about those two stories. But every other story in this collection, let me count here. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12. No, it's 12. Out of the 12 stories, there's only two that didn't fire on all cylinders. I would give every single one, I'd give all 10 of those stories five stars. That's how good they are. And even the In Retail and the Ice King story, I'd still give three stars. So if, I, if we're, if we're going to throw stars on something, I would give it four point, probably 4.75, 4, 4.8 stars, that kind of deal. Um, because it's nowhere near deserving of like a 4.5 or a 4. It's an outstanding collection. Which brings me to the fact that it's my third favorite collection of all time right now. Um, Clive Barker's Books of Blood will always be at number one. Uh, I, I can't imagine anybody coming along and dethroning that. Just like I can't imagine anybody coming along and dethroning Stephen King's It is my favorite book of all time. Ma Ma Marissa Pessel, Marisha Pessel and Joe Hill have come close. Uh, the Goldfinch came close, um, but I don't expect that to ever change. With this one, I have Clyde Barker's Books of Blood. I don't think that one will ever change. Right underneath that is Things We Lost in the Fire by Mariana Enriquez. And then we have this one by uh, Nana Nana Ajebanya. I think I got that right. It's the first name that's bothering me, and I can't find any pronunciations of the name online. But Friday Black, there's another story in here um, called Black Friday... Uh, well, no, no, it's, it's Friday Black, about Black Friday, um, the, the retail, you know, thing. So there's three stories in here about working in retail. But I like the story Friday Black especially because um, I, w I once worked on a book with my friend Jeff Brackett called Chucklers. I ended up leaving the project, but he went on to, to complete the project. Um, it was based on a short story of mine called He Who Has the Last Laugh um, about... And my my story my contribution to the novel opened up with kind of like a uh, it was basically zombies but not zombies and more like more like the raid zombies from uh, 28 Days Later but uh, anytime that someone laughed that that was the triggering point. Hang on, I got something on my leg. Oh, I kicked the shit. Sorry. Um, anytime someone laughed, they turned into like this maniacal killing machine kind of deal. Um, and that happened during Black Friday at a chain store like Walmart. Um, and this has notes of that. I always find it, it it's amazing. I know he, he's never read my, um, read my piece. Um, and this, of course, came out long, I mean, I wrote my piece probably uh, five years ago, uh, probably more. But uh, there were so many similarities, and I find it amazing when stuff like that happens, knowing that two creators shared absolutely no content with each other and came up with roughly the same idea. And because I like that idea, I love that story. So that's a little aside there. Um, the the standout stories in this collection are Through the Flash, Lark Street, Zimmerland is amazing. Uh, the Finkelstein Five, um, let's see here, The Lion and the Spider, uh, Friday Black. But I, I believe that my favorite, my favorite story in here um, is Light Spitter. And that is the story of the school shooting. I highly recommend you guys pick up this book, get through it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, if even if you don't read every single story, just about every single story is worth the price of admission. So when you get in here, even if even if you only like two or three, I still feel like you will think that this collection is worth your time. So have you read Friday Black? Uh, let me know down there in the comments below uh, if, uh, let's try, <laughs> I know I brought up politics and current affairs and things like that, but let's try not to rant and rave, uh, rant and rage about that stuff down there in the doobly-doo. Um, if you didn't like it, let me know why, but I have a feeling that people that don't like, like this book um, will have very strong opinions. I don't mind that, but please don't be rude about it, I will just delete your comment. It's as simple as that. Um, and what I mean rude is, you know, calling, name calling, things like that. Um, you can express your opinion and we can have a discussion. Same with if you like the book. 
Uh, but let me know. Don't just say, this book is great. I want to know details. I want to know exactly what you liked about the book so I can come back and talk to you about the book. That's what the comment section is for me. It's a conversation. It's a place to have a conversation. So let's have a conversation about this book down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!